everybody. It's Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this evening. So we got brand new info on Ernesto. Fresh off the press here it is. The 8 o'clock advisory. Ernesto has uh, done its thing with Bermuda here and is now heading out to sea. We're pretty much ready to say goodbye to him at this point. As we're of course expecting him to be kicked out to sea by a trough that's coming in from the U.S. It's going to be heading offshore soon. And that's a big reason why both the Atlantic coast in the u.s and canada aren't really going to be seeing much in the way of impacts from the storm other than increased surf and some rip current rip currents not really much of a need to really be talking about ernesto any further here now also here's a look at the environment to go along with it a lot of wind shear this is a big part of the reason why we're getting this storm kicked out the sea again with that trough giving you a little bit of a visual look at what we have going on here but there's our trough and out she go and out he goes another thing about this environment over here is the water's going to be very cool here so not really going to be concerned with this as well we would expect this storm to weaken pretty quickly so this is going to be the last video on ernesto here the bulk of this video is actually going to be about what happens after the fact and i've been seeing all kinds of runs in regards to the tropics afterwards and this is uh very uh, eye-opening for me seeing these uh, outlooks here on weeks two and three so I'm gonna be putting a little bit more emphasis in the tropics on a lot more of the videos ahead because as you can see this area in the dark red is a 60% chance of tropical development within a given point within this little um, maroon color 40% in this red color and then the um, little slash red lines here 20 but pretty broad area it's our main development region in the atlantic and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the models here and see why conditions are expected to be so favorable as we move forward here we're going to be looking at a mixture of our ensembles here as well as a couple operational runs so of course we're going to be looking at both the gfs ensemble on the main screen and on the top right corner we're going to have the european ensemble and the thing to pay attention to is of course this region right over here this region here is our main development region. So what we need to be paying attention to as we go forward is looking at the wind shear. The lighter the color, the lighter the wind shear. It's a little bit different with hurricanes where you want lighter wind shear versus tornadoes where you want a little bit stronger wind shear. But in any case, though, look at how the main development region clears up over time, especially as we get into next week and beyond here. So. And then also you see a little little areas of uh, low pressure kind of pop up here as well to go along with that. That kinematic profile, wind profile over this area is favorable for tropical development. And, it, and if a storm can get out here and maintain itself, it could go all the way into the Caribbean Gulf without much issue. It's not going to be much in the way of wind shear that will really be stopping it. If there's going to be any inhibiting factor at all, it might just be dry air. So as we go forward here, you can see over the main development region, there's a good bit of moisture here represented in the green. All this brown stuff here is dry air. Now look what happens as we go further and further out towards the Caribbean. There's pockets of dry air and pretty substantial pockets of that that'll continue to come along and maybe hamper some of this development here. It's questionable to say what will happen as time goes on here. But based off this operational run here, dry air still is going to be uh, kind of reigning supreme over that main development region. So we may not see quite as much development as I would expect to see, given the fact that the wind shear is so light. But with those warmer uh, sea surface temperatures, we might be able to overcome this as well. A lot of moving parts with the uh, outlooks and the forecast to come with this too. So. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot more update videos on that. So now we're going to be switching back to the ensemble member here. And of course, we get to take a look at Ernesto one last time here. But of course, our attention is of course going to be over towards main development region, namely towards West Africa. These low pressure centers that come off the West African coast and out into the waters usually have the best chance of becoming our tropical system. Sometimes you'll get something to flare up over here, but usually it'll be from these systems here. So watch what happens as time goes on. You want to pay attention to these little um, ISO bars here as well. If you start to see them kind of circulate around an area where we see these red numbers, these are our low pressure centers. That's something to pay attention to. That is likely a storm system beginning to develop. And as you see the colors begin to brighten, that's 
an increasing probability of a uh, low pressure or high pressure center beginning to develop and look what happens as time goes on especially get towards the end of this run we start to see more and more of those centers beginning to pop up so this is about on schedule i would say it's getting right towards peak hurricane season so we can expect to see something like this the real question is where are all of these going to go interesting thing to make note of here is ernesto when he made his approach to bermuda here and it ended up doing an interesting thing here these tropical systems have the ability to move these areas of high pressure out of the way and they don't cause them to dissolve of course but they end up moving because these two air masses can't exist within the same point one has to win out and with that whereas before if you see me kind of rewind this back our high pressure center was actually a lot further off to the west here but of course as Ernesto came through seeing this get pushed off to the east and the trend actually continues after that point what's significant about that is those high pressures have a, a steering current that can sometimes end up curving these storms out to sea quicker or they can actually push them a little bit further along into the coast here they have count they have a clockwise flow opposed to that counterclockwise flow that you would see with low pressures so with that being said here i'm wondering if anything that does develop here might have a heightened chance to get in past this area right here the 60 degree west line what's significant about that is once we get past this area you notice the only thing left here really is land so once you get into this corridor here the only thing that's left is land so i do have my concerns as to what could lie ahead here and the thing is both models are showing this both the GFS and the Euro Ensemble here in the left corner. So that being said, definitely need to be paying attention in the days ahead in regards to the tropics here, especially if you live in a coastal region or if you're planning to go on vacation to the islands. I know it's still summertime, but uh, just make sure you either check in on the channel or some sort of outsourcing that takes a look at tropical weather because it's peak hurricane season and we're still forecast to have a pretty active season. That being said, that's the video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button for me, and also hit that share button. We'll be seeing you very soon. Until then, it's been Tired Metalhead Weatherman. Have an awesome rest of your night.